Hi dear students, hope all are doing well. So it has been a long time we met through this platform. So I hope all of you perform well in the last two exam. I'm a busy one, paper is approaching. So this video is uh, for addressing that need. Uh, block number four important questions we are going to discuss today. So one more thing to add up. We are planning to start an online session for the uh, June 2022 exam. Uh, those who are interested, that's for the first semester uh, papers. So those who are interested, you can join our Telegram channel and there you will get more updates regarding the same. And if you feel that the contents are helpful, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and it will be a great help for me. And one more thing, uh, thank you for the support and encouragement so far received. Thank you. So let's get started. There are two types of organization, formal and informal organizations. Formal organizations are established with the aim of achieving well-defined goals. Informal organizations are focusing on ill-defined and intangible goals. Formal organizations, there is a hierarchy of management prevailing, but informal is characteristic by the uh, type of informal relationship. So they are focusing on per interpersonal relationship building. Formal organization has a well-defined goal and they are carrying out their task in order to achieve the goal. Informal organization, they don't have a well-defined task and goals. Roles and responsibilities are impersonally defined in formal while uh, they are in formal organization, they are focusing more on interpersonal relationship and they are focusing more on the spontaneity of relationship, sense of belonging, creativeness and homeliness and warmth while informal, while formal organization emphasize more on efficiency, discipline, etc. The social and the psychological needs of the employees are not catered in much in the formal while it has given more preference in the informal organization. Formal organization focus more on how to uh, achieve efficiency, how to maintain discipline, how to maintain consistency. These are the things they are concerned more about. Pattern of communication is formal type but in informal they are following an informal grapevine communication. Formal organizations are not reactive as well as responding to the changes happening in the external uh, external environment but the informal organizations are more vigilant and more dynamic while compared to the uh, formal organizations right there are uh, three types of uh, organization structures are there functional projectized and metrics so functional organization structures they have a clearly defined career path more flexible workforce are there while there have certain disadvantages like departmental works will get more priority and no career path in project management when we coming to the projectized organization better communication system is prevailing there more loyalty towards the project goal than the organization goal disadvantages is that less efficient usage of the resources and the project team they are coming from different department and they will come together and work together and once the finish once the project is finished they will get back to their parent department so the cohesion is less okay next pentrix organization they have a better coordination and maximum utilization of the resources but the disadvantages are higher potential of conflict because they have two types of managers there that is a functional managers and project managers so the chain of command is is a con conflicting one the subordinate have to report to two managers they have to follow the instruction of the two so that can create a, a chance of conflict and greater communication complexity also can happen in this matrix organization so these are some of the disadvantages of matrix organization right next is two types of organizations are there centralized organizations and decentralized organizations so when we are saying about the centralized organization they have a hierarchical decision making and they are focusing on autocratic style of leadership and they are following a bureaucratic one decision making is often taken at the top management and the instructions are passing out to the lower level and they have to follow it they don't have any role in the decision making and communication system is not transparent and definitely when the organization organization is passing through this change process it's quite difficult to manage it because more resistance will be there but when we are discussing about this and decentralized organization it's a democratic and a participative style of decision making and the uh, democratic leadership style also prevailing there the people are aware about what is happening in the organization and they have a sense of belonging to that firm and when the organization is passing through this type of change process it's quite easy for the firm to go ahead with that because the people are aware about the 
organizational system their uh, conditions economic financial economic condition what are the difficulties or challenges the organization facing they are well informed about that so they are ready to make uh, make them prepared for the changes so that is a decentralized organization so relatively unpredictable in outcome so decentralized organizations are helpful when the organization is passing through these turbulent times right then scalar chain means it's a formal line of authority flowing from the superior to the subordinate and here the chain could not be violated but at certain circumstances it can be violated and we call we will call it as uh, gang plan then another important topic is communication what do you mean by organizational communication so organizational communication is defined as the channels and forms of communication that occur within the organization there are two types of communications are there formal and informal when we are discussing about the formal communication it is vertical horizontal and diagonal vertical communication means the top management is providing information to the lower management and that is a vertical communication vertical communication itself we have downward communication and upward communication downward communication means the top from the top management to the lower level it's a downward communication in certain circumstances the lower level man lower level uh, employees have to give the feedback or their uh, sets of information required for the top management so that type of communication is known as upward communication it is very less well compared to the uh, downward communication horizontal communication means the communication existing between the people who belongs to the same hierarchy if the hr manager and the marketing manager having a communication channel so that is the horizontal communication when we are coming to the diagonal communication the communication system existing between the people who belongs to different hierarchy as well as in the from the different functional area for the example the marketing executive of the marketing department having communication with the hr manager of the hr department so that is the diagonal communication when we are coming to the informal communication we call it as grapevine so in informal communication there are different types of uh, communication systems are there that is chain type that is a is uh, providing certain information to b b to c so that is a chain type one then gossips are there there is uh, that information can uh, dispersed among uh, lots of people then another one is a probability communication so probability type of informal communication means uh, i have a set of information with me and i am uh, giving that information not to each and everyone but to some people only so there is a probability associated with that dispersal of the communication okay or information then another one is cluster so if you are communicating your uh, information or a particular sets of information you acquired from somewhere to only to your close peers and colleagues and not to everyone so that's a cluster type of informal communication so there are a certain importance of communication organization first is it promote motivation it act as a source of information it helps in uh, altering the individual attitude so formal and informal communications differences are formal is deliberately structured while informal is spontaneous formal or communication is rigid but informal is flexible it is following an official channel but informal is unofficial time taking process is formal fast informal communication accurate legal and authentic while the informal can be distorted it can create rumors and gossips A formal communication can be either in the written format or in the oral verbal and uh, verbal communications and uh, then informal communication usually oral only sources can be traced in the case of formal but it cannot be traced in the case of informal communication right so we you discussed about grapevine chain gossip probability and cluster and when we are coming to the process of communication so these are the process involved in the communication first is center is the person who is uh, having a certain uh, information and he wants to deliver that message to the receiver so what he uh, he just uh, encode the message encoding means he is converting that information into a message format and then he will provide Uh, that message to the channel and the channel can be channel ca channel is the source through which the information is passing and once the receiver receive the information he will decode it and after decoding the information that uh, receiver have to provide feedback to the sender so this is a two way process and the process of communication we have sender encoding message channel receiver and feedback so these are the elements included in the process of communication right 
So next is barriers of effective communication. So linguistic barriers, emotional barriers. That is linguistic barriers due to the uh, difference in the dialects and the language of different region. Then emotional barriers. The person who are uh, con co communicating with each other, they ha both are in the different. Uh, mindset so that is if one is more emotional that is he is in the higher rank or mood and the definitely there is a higher chance of a distortion of the communication right then psychological barriers that is a mental issues psychological uh, issues like a stage fear so people having a stage fear so even if they are aware about the things and they have a better knowledge than the other persons but it's quite difficult for them to convey the message properly so that is a psychological barrier then cultural barriers so because of this uh, globalization we are working in an atmosphere where diverse workforce come together so different ethnicity and how to deal with it so these all can act as a barrier then physical barriers physical barriers means due to the uh, closed cabins then faulty equipment so these are also physical barriers we call the all the disturbance happening in the communication process or channel we call it as noise then organizational barriers means because of the multiple organization structure in the enterprises then different structures and setup so the hierarchical preferences in the organization so it can act as a barrier then attitude barriers people having different attitudes some are extrovert some are introvert so that attitude also matters and it can act as a barrier for effective communication physiological barriers the uh, di 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 uh, dis dyslexia shrillness of the voice then uh, there are some uh, due to your physical uh, illness or physical ill health uh, communication can be uh, affected so that is physiological barriers perception barriers so we have a certain perception like halo effect the horn effect that means you are judging a person's com person's information or person's uh, knowledge on the basis of a particular criteria maybe you like it or maybe uh, you don't like it so these type of your perception negative or positive perception so these all have a impact on the communication so if uh, these all affect the uh, effective communication technological barriers and socio religious barriers are other sets of uh, barriers that are affecting the effective communication so this is also an important question so what do you mean by communication what are the different channels of communications and different types of communications and along with that what are the barriers for effective communication then when we are coming to the uh, organization culture there are different types of cultures are there so one of the culture is this uh, the organizations that are having a stable structure but they are focusing inward that means they are focusing more on more into their organization so these type of organizations are following a hierarchical organization culture that is they favor structure and control coordination and efficiency stability is important for them okay if the organization have a stable structure but they are focusing outward they are focusing more on the external environment so these type of organizations are following a market culture that is uh, they are result oriented they want the things to be done properly they they value competitors and uh, they want to make their uh, achievement more uh, glorious and they have to be customer driven so these are the market oriented culture but when the organization have a flexible uh, structure and they are focusing towards their organization so that is the clan type of organization culture they value cohesion they value participation they consider the organization as a family they are focusing more on mentoring and nurturing their talents like that then uh, the organization having a flexible structure along with an outward focus so that we call it as ad hoc ad hoc uh, ad hocracy ad hocracy means dynamic entrepreneurial people are ready to take risk they are more focused on innovation uh, they foster innovation they are providing cutting edge services as well as products so that is ad hocracy so the organization having a flexible organization structure with inward focus we call it as clan flexible organization structure with outward focus we call it as ad hocracy stable structure with inward focus hierarchy stable structure with outward focus is market culture right then there are different uh, changes are happening in the organization so sometimes they want to merge sometimes they want to diversify their products so these changes are inevitable for the organization to withstand in this competitive world so when the changes are occurring definitely 
uh, some res resistance also happen so there are certain drivers for change the external as well as the internal drivers external drivers means the competitors performance the customers demand investors demand the technological updation of the country then governmental policy so these all are active as, as a external drivers for change while we are uh, coming to the internal drivers that's capable the organization has better resources they need to use their uh, competitive resources they they want they are not satisfied with the current level of performance so they want to improve much or they want to rewire them so these all act as an internal drivers of change so these two drivers are important internal as well as the external drivers so under that we have to study levin's Kurt Levin's three-stage uh, change process. So, in three-stage change process, first phase is unfreeze. So, first in the unfreeze stage, they will determine what all things they need to change. They ensure that there is a strong support from the top management. Create the need of the change and manage and understand the doubts and concerns. So, the organization will determine why they need change and what is the relevance of the change now. And they will make the uh, make uh, the atmosphere in such a way that top management is having uh, provi is providing good support to the uh, change process and they will uh, always try to be transparent uh, regarding the change process and uh, ready to address the concern of the people who are working with them and the transparent communication they will manage and understand the concern of the uh, people and they will address it right then coming to the change process they will communicate uh, during the change process they will try to communicate often and uh, then it can uh, reduce the rumors spreading and it can empower the action and uh, people will be more participative in the process so that's the change process once the change happened they have to refreeze it so they changed it and now they want to keep that change for a long period of time for that what they have to do they have to anchor the changes in their culture make it as a part of their culture they have to develop different ways to sustain the change happen and provide support and training the people who undergo these changes they have to provide training and uh, support then only they can withstand the challenges so these are the steps involved in refreeze and finally they have to celebrate the success unfreeze change and refreeze so these are the three stages involved in the Kurt Levin change mode. Next is OD intervention. So OD interventions means there are the learning process. So when the organizations are passing through these phases, a change process, the uh, some uh, interventions or learning process are required and that is particularly used when the organizations are facing from uh, stages of development so these are the structured activities sometimes they combine uh, different tasks together and uh, or individuals together and then focus on improving their social or task performance their od interventions uh, normally the organizations introduce with the help of some change agent the change agent can be an external person or an internal one they, or they can um, uh, take the help of the experts in that area so these all uh, people can act as a change agent and they are the responsible one to uh, carry over that change okay so the structured activities means or diverse procedures surveys interviews group discussions and every action that influences an organization's improvement program in a change agent client system relationship so that is called intervention so let's look into certain interventions organization sensitivity training sensitivity training is focusing on the individuals how to uh, aware about others emotions that means you are when we are confronting a situation you have to be able to think from his shoes so that is the main aim of sensitivity training these are more uh, appropriate for the managers so it will help them to change in their attitude it can uh, enhance their interpersonal skills more managerial skills they can effectively manage the uh, employees particularly during a time of uh, crisis and they can be more resilient so these are some of the benefits of sensitivity training team building so nowadays the organizations are focusing more on team building than on individual development so if you are developing a team that can withstand the challenges and they can carry the challenges in the carry the objectives of the goals in a better manner so that is uh, that can lead to an effective organization so team building is another intervention then survey feedback so organization will look into the issues prevailing in the organization and they will provide uh, with the solution also so that's a survey feedback then job redesigning so that will reduce the uh, 
boredom and it can increase the job satisfaction high morale these all are the uh, expected result of job redesign another intervention is socio technical that is work system including ergonomics and all enhancing the working atmosphere so that the people will be more effective and their satisfaction level is high and they can be more productive so that is a socio technical intervention structural interventions means the organizational structure based intervention so they are improved and clearer and roles and responsibilities and less ambiguity okay So that's all for this video. We have covered the important concepts of uh, MMPC1. Already videos are uploaded. Please go through it. It will give you a clear picture. And if you have any doubts, uh, you can post in the comment and I'll address it. Right. So study hard. Focus on studies. Your hard work will pay off. Right. And uh, good luck. Best wishes and prayers for the exam. So stay safe, stay healthy and stay blessed. Right. Thank you. We will meet again with another video. Till then, bye. Thank you.